looking forward to this. Take it away. Hey guys, good morning. Good morning. So, like he said, my name is Emmanuel. I, uh, the, I am the young adults pastor, so if you have kids from the age of... So it's, we are the opposite of SWAT. SWAT. It's 40 to 60, we are 20 to 35. So we're on the opposite spectrum. But uh, today, I just want to, before I even start, I just want to thank Pastor Al and Pastor Steve for this moment, because this is such a, an amazing opportunity, because... For, so, for those who don't know, I'm from Kenya, and just coming from Kenya to here, when I was a kid, the Lord would just show me these things that I would one day speak in front of white people before I even saw any white person. <laughs> and now I'm just, it's crazy. Like, I didn't, even, I didn't even know white people existed. Like, I only thought it was just <laughs> black people all around. But here we are. So, I just, so I'm just grateful to God for just his faithfulness and all, all the good stuff. So, let's jump in. I am doing chapter 14 in the book today, and it's about intimacy. And the overall, uh, when we get to chapter 14, when uh, Psalms, uh, uh, not Psalms, 1 Samuel chapter 30, and what happened, what's happening there is David just went to the uh, Philistines, he's been living there for a while, and then he tries to join in the Philistine army so they can go battle Israel. And as they went on that journey, the Amalekites came and raided his home, stole everything that they had, their wives, their properties. And so that's kind of the whole context. And there's four key uh, points that Pastor Steve makes in the book. Uh, it's compromise, engagement with God, sanctuary, and waiting on God. And that's kind of, that's going to be my topic for today. I'll cover each of those uh, points by the end of the message. The first thing that he talks about is compromise. Now, in the life of David up to this point, before he did anything else, he always prayed. He always sought after God to find out what happened. But in 1 Samuel 30, and before we see how he ended up there, for us to see that, I should say, let's go to 1 Samuel 27, and let, we see the decision that David made. And this, I'll read how he ended up in the Philistines' uh, country. So this is 1 Samuel 27 from verse 1 to 4. And David said in his heart, Now I shall perish some day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than, than that I should say... Whoa, English. It's my second language. <laughs> ah, I'll try this again. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape to the land of the Philistines... And Saul will despair of me to seek me any more in any part of Israel. So I shall escape out of his hand. Then David arose and went over with 600 men who were with him to Achish, the son of... I'm never going to try that name. <laughs> and we, we go on and he lists a bunch of names that I cannot pronounce. But the point is, he said in his heart, let me get out of this place because it's too dangerous. I cannot stay here. Now, that was more like a business decision. I, I need, for my life preservation, i got to get out of here. And a lot of times we do that. We have these good ideas that we make, but they're not necessarily God ideas. They might sound good, but it's not from God. And the funny thing is we make these decisions, and then we're like, all right, God, bless this idea that I have. I think this is an idea that you really, really love. And God is like, well, I didn't, that's not my idea. And we, the sad part is, we work hard to make those good ideas work, and we're just wasting energy and our toiling for no reason. Instead of, God, what is your plan for my life? And God says, ah, do this, 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 this. And then I'm like, perfect. And then you go and walk it out in, and it's, it doesn't mean it's easier. It just, well, it doesn't mean it's hard. That's not the word. It doesn't mean it's safer. It's just easier. Are you with me? So... Are you with me? Yeah. Uh, let me do Where's Ricky Bobby. Whole heart. Victory. Whole heart. Ah, uh, here we go. All right. We compromise when we have good ideas, but not God ideas. And you see this in the Garden of Eden. The serpent approached a woman. It was a good idea to be like God. That was her desire. I want to be like God. But how she went about it was wrong. 
And we do that quite a bit. We, we have the right desires, and that's the enemy will never trick you with a bad desire. It's always something good. Hey, if you cut this little corner right here, then everything is going to work out. If you cut this corner right here, then you're going to get there much quicker. But you don't know God's plan. It's let's go right, left, right, left, right to reach your destination. And this is why it's so important to be intimate with Christ. Because you need to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You need to hear him tell you, I want you to go left, but stay there for three seconds and then go right. Because those small instructions will change the course of your life. I mean, look at me. I'm from Kenya. There's no way that I should be here, but because of my mom's obedience to Christ and his voice, she obeyed everything that he's told her, and now I'm here in a land I never thought I'll be. So the other two points that Pastor Steve makes, and I kind of combine them, is uh, engagement with God and sanctuary. And I'll just title that as intimacy with God. When you're intimate with Jesus, there's, not, there's never a wrong turn or a bad decision. Because as you're doing it, and if you follow it out of his plan, he will quickly correct you and bring you back on course because he's with you. Because we make mistakes. Nobody's perfect in this room. And the same thing in David, with David when he went to the land of the Philistines. It might not have been God's best, but God took care of him in the land. God prospered him in the land. And even look at the life of Abraham. He lied twice. But God still blessed him. It's funny that he lied and he got out richer than he was before the lie. Isn't that crazy? But that's because he had a relationship with the Lord. The Lord knew exactly where he was taking him. And the Lord knew he would do that. So out of his love and mercy, the Lord accounted for that and blessed him anyway. And this is why being a man makes it hard. Because we know our, all decisions that we make will impact our whole families. If it's a job decision, like you've got to move, then your whole family is moving with you. No decision that a man makes is easy. And that's why you must have a relationship with him so he can tell you, actually, don't take that job. Take this job. Or actually, don't do that. Just hold your tongue because your kid needs just to vent for this moment. You have to hear his voice. You have to be intimate with him so that he can lead you to whatever he's trying to take you. Men are supposed to be the foundation of the family. Listen to this verse in, uh, in Psalm 11.3. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the man is destroyed, what can the family do? Psalms 121 verse 7. I mean 127 verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. If you notice, they still built the house. It was just in vain. Same thing with us. We must let God build us up who are the foundation so that we can avoid a lot of pain in our lives. Because if you make a mistake, it's not just impacting you. It's your wife and kids. And that weight on your shoulders is sometimes too heavy. That's why Christ come on, says, Come unto me, ho, all who are heavy, la all heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Because our yokes are heavy, but his yoke is easy. But you can't do that without intimacy. You can't do that without knowing his heart. I was, this a long time ago. The Lord showed me this vision. I was in the vision. I was in this uh, construction site. And they were, I knew they were building a skyscraper. And the Lord said this. How high this building will go will determine the foundation that they set right now. And what he was telling me is this, how far I want to go in life with him will determine on how much scripture foundation I have put in my heart. And so that applies to all of us. 
If you want to be successful with the Lord, you have to have the foundation of Scripture and Him. Because He's the teacher. It's His book that we read. So might as well listen to Him. <laughs> you must let God in who is the master builder and let Him build you up. One of my favorite definitions of my uh, intimacy is this. And this is from, um, this is the last time I'll give him credit. And then from then on, it's my, my, my definition. He, Brian Ming, he defines intimacy as into me see. Into me see my brokenness, my fears, my strengths, and my weakness. Into me see that I'm afraid of failing as a husband and a father. Into me see that I'm not sure where to go. Into me see my vulnerabilities. Into me see. So I'm about to get married actually next week. I'm getting married. Uh, <laughs> So as I was preparing this message, all these things I just said were just real to me because I'm like, wow, it's not just me no more. I can't just do whatever I want. Someone else will feel the pain if I goof off. So I understand the weight that a lot of you feel, or beginning to anyway. And then you throw kids in the mix and everything just goes haywire. But... Into me see that I need you in this season. And these are cries that I make to the Lord and I hope that you start making to the Lord. Into me see that I need you. Intimacy only happens through waiting on God. My generation, I suppose, we like quick things. And the younger generation, they like even quicker things. And it, it's kind of contradictory. And that's the thing with the Lord. He goes at his own pace. He's not going to be rushed. You, like, God, I need this, I need this, I need this. And as I'm coming out of this, my early 20s, you know, for early 20s, you want everything right now. You think you can take on the whole world by yourself. You, you don't have to, you don't want to wait for tomorrow. Like, you're going to do this now. And then as you mature, as most of you know, you realize God has his own plan and his own timing. And have you guys, I saw this video a while back. Uh, they did the actual race of a rabbit and a tortoise. And would you believe it, the tortoise won in the race. Because the rabbit was running all over the place. And the tortoise was just steady and consistent, just one step at a time. And actually, the rabbit ran and stopped right before the finish line and just chilled there. And that's where he was passed. <laughs> and I'm going to read, the Lord told me this. This is in this, a little while back. Son, I've been waiting on you this whole time. You've just been running all over the place. If you stay in my presence long enough, you will know where we are going and you won't have to waste all that time. He told me that and I was like, wow. Because that's what the rabbit did. And sometimes we're all like rabbits. We're just all over the place. And all we need to do is just slow down and just listen. Because listening doesn't take that long. Well, take that back. It takes long to develop your spiritual ears. But then after you develop them, it doesn't take that long. Because his turn right here, it maybe will take like an hour before you, you, so they can hear that. But if you do it on your own, you've tried years and years of years of trying to get something to do, of trying to make it work so you can turn right instead of just saying, Lord, should I turn right? Yes, you turn right. Rather than you struggling, 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 then figuring out I had to turn right back there. And you've just wasted all that time. Waiting, in, waiting on God is just another way of saying staying 
in God's presence. Staying in his presence and letting him instruct you on where you should go and what you should do. I want to read this verse. It's not in my notes, that's why I got to pull it up real quick. Uh, it's one of those I hope is here because uh, it would be embarrassing. And it's not. But <laughs> it's in Psalms. Uh, it, the Bible says, I will instruct you in the way that you should go. And then he goes on and says a couple of things. That, and then, but the key I want to make, it, the key point is this. That verse says, don't be like the mule or the horse. And if you, how does a mule or a horse live their life? By pain. For a horse, when you pull the bit, it feels the pain, so it turns. A mule, you hit it, I got to go this other way. It's, they're being led by external factors. When things go wrong, that's not where I need to be. I got to go over here. But he says, I will teach you and instruct you in the way that you should go. And I summarize the verse like this. Don't be externally led, but be internally led. Be led by the one who's in you. Because that way life is just easy. It's easier, I should say, because the Lord will sometimes lead you through the storm because that's where you need to go and learn some stuff. Because, and this is a point that I've, it's becoming real to me these days. The Lord will take you through the valley of the shadow of death so that you can be more like Him. All the pain that we go through is for one, one, one reason only. To make, him more, more like, to make you more like Christ. And it's not about you. It's about him. And the, when I learned that, I was like, all right, I can suffer for as long as I know the end goal is to make me more like you. So as I wrap up here, I'll just leave you with this statement. Let's make a point to look to him and be in him. And that way, You'll avoid five or six years of heartache, which to me is a better deal. Amen? Amen. So I have questions, and I'm not going to go through all that you guys can read. So <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot more than I thought. But uh, I'm just going to pray real quick, and then you guys can, and then I'll give it over to Al. Uh, so, Lord, I just thank you for this morning. Thank you for the words that you've uh, put on my heart to share. I pray that every person in this room, have, have, they've grabbed what you need them to hear, not what I need them to, not what I want to say. But I just pray, Father, that in the group discussions, there will be openness and people will just be willing to share and just be vulnerable with each other. And it's your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. I want to come down here. So, Emmanuel, why don't you come down? There's some things I want to say to you and over you, okay? So, Emmanuel has gone through a couple of thresholds lately. One is, a couple of weeks ago, he was ordained as one of our pastors. So, that's a, that's a long time coming of being very faithful for a long period of time. And the other thing is, he mentioned it, is next Thursday he's getting married. So... His life is about to never be the same again. <laughs> so would you extend your hands toward Emmanuel? I just want to pray over him. Father, I just thank you for Emmanuel's faithfulness, Lord. He's been faithful over the little, and now you're giving him more. And so, Father, I ask that you bless him. I ask that you bless his marriage. I ask that you bless the fruit of his womb, or his wife's womb. <laughs> and, but, but we also have a spiritual womb, I think, and whatever we can ponder in our hearts, God can carry in our womb. So, Father, just bless them. You said as Jesus grew, he grew in favor before God and men, and we pray that over you, Emmanuel. I'm so um, very proud of you. You know, from the first time I saw you, I loved you, and, and uh, I thought, I really like this guy. He's going to go places, so I'm so proud of all that you've done and all that you're doing, and I just say blessings to you, okay?
me a hug. Yeah. That was a good word this morning. Hey, any first time?